Hello and welcome to our uh, final video dealing with chapter 13, uh, risk return and the uh, security market line. Uh, in this video, um, I just want to talk about um, systematic risk for a little bit and um, just point out some of the important things that you'll definitely need to know as we go into, into Monday's lecture. All right, so what exactly is systematic risk, right? And when we're talking about systematic risk, we're talking about risk factors that, that really affect a large number of assets, okay? This is, this is also, called, also what we call non-diversifiable risk, okay, or, or market risk, all right? That includes things like um, inflation, interest rates, change in the GDP. So these are things that, these are systematic risks that, again, affect a, a lot of assets and it's something that we really can't diversify away, um, diversify out of or, or get away from systematic risk by diversification. So when we're looking at, at unsystematic risk, right? Um, it's important that you understand the, the difference between systematic and an unsystematic risk, right? Um, think about a strike by the employees, right? That's pretty much a, an, an unsystematic um, or a systematic risk, right? Um, it's, it's inherent in, in the marketplace. People strike, look at the government shutdown, right? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's something that's out there. It's, 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 um, you know, it's something that, 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 that it's a possible risk that could happen with, you know, within a company. Okay. Um, so it's important again to, to also realize that, um, this unsystematic risk, it is, it is unique or it's, it's unsystematic for, for one company. Okay, so like we said, labor strikes, right? Um, maybe there's a shortage for the parts. Um, those are example again of of, of unsystematic um, unsystematic risks. Okay, um, let's go back to this 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 strike idea. Okay, of of being being an unsystematic risk, right? What if the United Auto Workers stage a strike against the entire auto industry, right? So at that point, it be it doesn't become an unsystematic risk, or it does become an it changes from an unsystematic risk to a systematic risk, right? It affects the entire auto industry. And think about what the think about the the suppliers of the um, um, uh, of the auto industry. Right, steel. Um, they could, you know, steel companies could be affected. Um, you know, gla PPG glass makers can be affected. Um, so it's important to realize again that that systematic risk is something that affects a number of assets or a number of of investments. Okay, when we're looking at that unsystematic risk, those affect a limited number of assets. Right, um, a strike at the local plant. Right, we could say that hey, that's unique to that company. Okay, um, one one major point um, that you need to take away from the the difference between systematic and unsystematic risk is the fact that it's not the event that determines whether it's systematic or unsystematic risk. It's actually the impact of that event, all right? So we said a strike, a labor strike. Well, it could be systematic, it could be unsystematic. It all depends, right? If the United Auto Workers Union decides to, st to stage a strike against the entire auto industry, well, guess what? That's, that's a pretty big event and that has an impact on a lot of other companies, right? So just keep that in mind. Uh, again, coming away from coming away from the difference between systematic and unsystematic, you'll be fine. 
um, for class purposes. Uh, when we're looking at returns, right, uh, there are some, some, some questions in the uh, study guide. Um, so you should know come Monday, you know, the different returns there are and how to calculate those different returns, right? We have total return. That's expected return plus unexpected return. We break down unexpected return into its two parts, right? The systematic portion and the unsystematic portion. So if we take those two equations, we can express them in a, in, in a totally different fashion, right? We could say total return equals the expected return plus the systematic portion and the unsystematic portion, right, of, of that risk, okay? Um, diversification, you should know what that is. Um, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, basically, when we diversify, well, especially for you guys since you're all finance majors, um, diversification really is nothing more than um, divvying up your, your investments, right? Not putting all your eggs in one basket, right? In other words, we can um, diversify a portfolio by investing in a number of different asset classes, a number of different sectors. Um, again, diversification is not just holding a lot of assets, okay? So keep that in mind. Um, you know, let's say you own 50 internet stocks. You're really not diversified, right? Uh, if you own 50 internet stocks and then on top of that you own a couple manufacturing um um, manufacturing company stocks, you own a couple, um, you know, you own some government bonds, um, you're, you're investing in different asset classes as well as, as different sectors of, of the market that are out there, okay? Um, you could take those 50 internet stocks and let's say they span over 20 different industries, then you're diversified, right? Um, so, you know, if you're in the internet, if you own internet stocks and you own, you know, Google, and then maybe you own, um, um, a company that, that has, you know, logistic software, um, things like that. Um, here, just a table of standard deviations in annual portfolio returns. Again, um, we'll be working on calculating standard deviation variance uh, with the portfolios, por portfolio return and whatnot. So you'll be fine there. Um, the principles of diversification, you should definitely know this, right? And we're going to talk about this in class a little bit more. We're going to talk about um, the benefits, right, of diversification. And we're going to, um, well, we're just going to talk about the principles of diversification. So you should know what they are, right? Diversification, hopefully, will substantially reduce the variability or the risk of returns without an equivalent reduction in the expected return, right? Again, by reducing, by, um, reducing the risk, right? Again, this arises because why? Well, there's worse than expected returns from one asset are going to be offset by better than expected returns from another asset. So since you have a whole group of assets, of investments in different sectors, if one does bad, guess what? Hopefully you hold the other one that's gonna do much better, okay, in a totally different sector, all right? Um, there is a minimum level of, of risk that cannot be diversified away. That's that systematic risk, right? That's the things that we can't control. Um, interest rates, inflation, you know, changes in GDP, things like that. Um, you should know what diversifiable risk is, right? Um, diversifiable risk. We're talking about the risk that can be eliminated, right? How do we eliminate it? Well, we combine different assets into a portfolio, right? Um, so again, um, diversifiable risk it can also be known as, you know, unsystematic risk, unique risk, which is kind of a, a synonym for unsystematic risk, um, or even asset-specific risks, okay? So think about it this way. If you hold Google, let's just say Google, okay? You hold one asset in Google, right? Or what if you hold 
Google and, and Yahoo and um, uh, what's the other one? Um, I can't think. Well, let's just say you hold those two, right? They're in the same same industry for the most part, right? Again, again, if you hold a bunch of assets that are within the same industry or, or just one single asset, you're exposing yourself to risk that had you diversified, you wouldn't be, um, uh, you, you know, you wouldn't, um, uh, you wouldn't have that risk if you diversify away from it, right? So if you hold one asset or, or an asset and just in one or a bunch of assets in one industry, right, then you're accepting more risk than than you than you should because you could diversify some of that risk away. Um, you should know how to calculate total risk. You should know, well, you should know what it is. Let's put it that way. Um, total risk, we're looking at systematic plus unsystematic risk, right? So we're looking at the systematic risk that we can't diversify away, things like inflation, interest rates, changing interest rates, whatnot. And then you're also including that unsystematic, or excuse me, yeah, the unsystematic risk, right? The things that are unsystematic, that are unique, right? That are asset specific, okay? Um, keep in mind that when we're looking at risk, that standard deviation of the return, that's how we measure that total risk. So you should definitely know that, right? You should know that standard deviation of, of returns is how we measure our total risk, okay? Again, if we have a, a, a portfolio that's, that's, that's well diversified, that unsystematic risk should be very small, okay? Because we're picking good stocks, we're diversifying, we're picking um, assets in a bunch of different, um, bunch of different industries. <clears throat> um, let's see, the unsystematic risk principle. You should know what that is going into class on Monday, right? Again, we know there is a reward for bearing risk, okay? However, there's not a reward for bearing risk unnecessarily. So it's very important that we diversify. We don't want to expose ourselves to risk if it's if it's not necessary, okay? <clears throat> uh, we will work on measuring systematic risk. We'll look at the beta and we'll see how to use the, the beta coefficient um, going into class. All you need to know is what is the beta coefficient? Well, it's how we measure systematic risk, right? What does it tell us? Well, again, if we have a beta of one, um, basically we're saying that the systematic risk um, of our portfolio is equal to the overall market. If we have a, a beta that's less than one, we're pretty well diversified, right? That implies that the asset has less systematic risk than, than the overall markets. Then if we have a beta that's greater than one, well, guess what? We have assets that has more systematic risk than the overall market, okay? Um, we'll get into this in class. Um, as long as you know right now, just coming out or going into class, which betas are good, which betas are bad, uh, you'll be fine, okay? Um, we'll work in class on how to calculate totals for systematic risk. Um, we'll look at um, portfolio betas, okay? Spoiler alert, all we got to do is calculate the weight times the beta for each of the stocks. And that tells us what our beta portfolio is. As long as you know that, you're good. Um, Make sure you know what the risk premium is and how that um, coincides with the beta, right? Remember that we have that risk premium. Well, what's that risk premium? And again, this is kind of a, a um, uh, for lack of a better term, we're just beating a dead horse here because we already know risk premium, that's that expected return minus the risk-free rate, okay? So what we're saying here is that if we have a high beta, we're going to have, hopefully, a higher risk premium, okay? So it, the risk premium and the beta, they're, they, they, they work together in a sense that um, they move proportionally together, or they move together, right? If beta increases, if the risk 
increases, well, guess what? Our risk premium should also increase, okay? So there definitely is that relationship between the risk premium and the beta, okay? Um, let's see what else. Risk to reward ratio. Um, I believe there are a few questions on that in the um, study guide. Um, so just make sure you know what the risk reward ratio is when you come into class on Monday, okay? Um, market equilibrium. You should know what that is. You should know the equation for it. We'll work on the calculations in class together. But again, the takeaway here is just knowing that what happens in equilibrium, right? We say that all the assets and, and the portfolios have the same risk reward ratio and all else being equal, the reward to risk ratio is the same for the market, okay? Uh, you should know what the security market line is. Um, again, this is what represents the, the market, market equilibrium. Um, capital asset pricing model. You should definitely know what this is, okay, going into class. And again, we'll discuss it in a lot more detail, um, but we're talking about the capital asset pricing model. Again, it all it does is define the relationship between risk and return. So you should know this equation. And again, we'll work with it a lot in class. Oh, Jesus, sorry. Get back here. Oh, going the wrong way. Sorry, guys. Okay, so you should know this equation, right? The expected return is equal to the return plus the beta times the expected return minus the return. Okay, so basically what we what this tells us here is if we know what the asset systematic risk is, we can use this cap M model to determine what the expected return is. Okay, um, you should know what factors affect return, right? Time value of money measured by the risk free rate. Um, Again, knowing those market um, market rules that we talked about in chapter 12, right? Investors are rewarded for bearing systematic risk, and we measure that by the market risk premium, okay? Again, when we're trying to uh, measure systematic risk, you got to know it's measured by the beta, okay? And we'll go through some examples of this in class on how to calculate the CAPM model, um, so that's it for chapter 13. Um, again, as long as you sat down, watches, took down some notes, hey, this is important. We're going to discuss this in more detail in class. I need to know what it is. You'll be fine. Okay. We'll work on all the calculations together. Um, and we'll, you know, we'll go step by step through the calculations. We'll talk about them, what they mean. We'll get into more detail. Um, again, just going into class, if you have that high level understanding of what we're going to talk about you'll be fine. Okay. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll see you on Monday. Don't forget, uh, due Monday is your chapter 12, chapter 13 study guides, as well as chapter 12 homework. So if you have any questions on the homework or need any assistance, please feel free and text me. Totally not a problem. Thanks for tuning in and uh, we'll see you next week.